this week started with me getting Zoom bombed. And it was one of the most traumatic couple minutes I've experienced in quite a while. So here's what happens. Here's what a Zoom bombing experience is like. I'll describe it in words because I don't want to show you what it was actually like because it, like I said, traumatic. So I was running a public Zoom meeting, doing a Q&A about my subject area and invited uh, you know, my, my audience. I put it on Facebook as a public event page, mistake number one, with my Zoom link. Now, it's not a mistake to use a public event page on Facebook, but to put my Zoom link in there, trying to make it easier for my audience to find it, that was a mistake. So 15 minutes into my meeting, it started. First of all, I suddenly started seeing somebody writing on my screen, F, U, C, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So large, you know, curse word. And then suddenly they took over my screen. They shared their screen with very gross pornographic videos right there on the screen. Of course, I was shocked. I was in shock for a couple of seconds, like what's going on? I, this has never happened to me in uh, many years of using Zoom. I do, I've done, I've accounted something like over a thousand Zoom meetings, many of them group meetings, and this has never happened before. So gross pornographic images came, uh, videos came there, and um, other people un unmuted and started saying racist things verbally. And then uh, once I disabled the ability for people to screen share and to unmute, then they started chatting because chatting, you know, typing in, hi everyone, how's everyone going and asking for people's questions and seeing their comments and the chat. Those, that's a very valuable part of a Zoom meeting. You want to get the people's feedback and get their, get the pulse of what's, what they're thinking. And well, they started putting racist and hateful, just really terrible chat messages in there. And not only were they doing that, they even renamed themselves as other legitimate participants in the meeting. Yes. So one of them renamed them as renamed themselves as me. Another uh, person, several people renamed themselves as other people that I, that I personally knew as very thoughtful students of mine, you know, renamed. And then re after renaming themselves and personating them, they then chatted the raceful things that of course those real people would never say. So, once I started, you know, once I saw people doing these kinds of things, of course, I try to remove them from the meeting as fast as I could. But it was a coordinated group attack. This all happened in a matter of three to five minutes before I finally ended the meeting for everybody. So I, I, in the first, you know, 10 seconds, I was in shock, not knowing what to do. And then I, I, I started thinking, wow, how are they doing this? Okay, let me restrict my screen sharing capability. Okay, let me not let people be able to speak by not allowing them to unmute. Okay, let me stop, uh, allow them not to, un let me disable the ability for them not to rename themselves. I was starting to do these things once I realized what they were doing, but the problem was that, and then of course, once I started realizing it was a group of people, I locked the room so that nobody else could come in, but then I still couldn't remove the right people because they had already re they are once they came in they renamed themselves so i didn't know which one was the correct you know elisa which one was the right you know uh jennifer or whatever that, that i knew personally right who, who was the right one couldn't tell so um i you know unfortunately of course that ruined my meeting that that had to um get canceled early uh, or ended early and it was a traumatic experience for everybody who was there, um, but especially for me, the facilitator and the speaker. You know, as a solopreneur, chances are you're probably doing most of your group Zoom meetings by yourself. You probably don't have an assistant. For those of you who have an assistant or a facilitator who can help with this kind of thing, wonderful. But for those of us who don't, we have to think of ways to prevent the trolls from coming in at all, okay? And that's, that's what I wanna share with you today is I thought a lot about how to, you know, because the thing is, I actually regularly need my attendees to share their screen with me so I can help them with something on their website or to show me something else that they're looking at or 
my attendees need to share their screen with me. They need to chat. They sometimes need to rename themselves because they join the Zoom meeting as their on their spouse's computer or they join their Zoom meeting from their phone and then their name says iPhone. So I don't know who they are. They have to rename. So I have to keep these features available. I can't restrict screen sharing. I can't restrict chatting. I can't restrict unmuting. Sometimes they unmute to, to say, hey, George, uh, you're still on the wrong slide or, or whatever it is that they need to, to alert me of, right? I can't restrict the chat because that's how so many, so many people get to know each other in my meetings and form a community. So I, 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 most of the articles and videos, you know, articles you read or videos you watch about preventing Zoom bombing will tell you to do these things, restrict the screen sharing, restrict the chat, restrict the, the muting, restrict people. Of, of course we could do that, but that would be restricting the freedom of our attendees to actually interact with us, which is what we need to build community, to build um, a relationship with our audience. So the real answer and, and also some people say, well, George, you have to stop using Zoom because Zoom is not a secure platform. The people who say that, in my opinion, don't really understand what Zoom bombing is about. The, the, the Zoom bombers, the people, the, the trolls, the trolls who are doing this, they're looking for easy targets. They're not going and, look, and trying to guess Zoom meeting numbers because Zoom meeting numbers are always, uh, what is it, like something like, um, seven or eight digits long. No one is going to guess your meeting number and be able to show up at the right time. No, nobody is capable. And yes, I've heard about software that can find Zoom meeting numbers and test it. But to be honest, I have never, uh, I, I don't think the trolls, who typically teenage boys, you know, with, with still underdeveloped brains and too much testosterone, they're, they're, they're not using sophisticated methods like that. Okay. It's not that. What, what they're doing, and I'll show you real quick, they're simply going onto places like Facebook and going to the events section of Facebook and searching Zoom, okay? And when you do that, it's within minutes, you can find lots of Zoom meeting IDs for public meetings. I did, I'm not gonna show you on the screen because I don't wanna, well, I mean, I'm sure there's, the trolls already know how to do this, um, but, but I have a blog post, and if you read the blog post associated with this video, there's a link that shows you, wow, it's easy for you to find in within two or three minutes, several free public Facebook event pages that have their Zoom meeting IDs listed like mine was. So I'm not the only one getting bombed. Lots and lots of people are getting bom uh, Zoom bombed. So the solution, so people say, well, stop using Zoom, use something else. Well, if I use something else, I still need, if I'm doing a, I might, if I'm doing a public free meeting where I want lots of people there interacting with me, I still need people to register in some way. And if I allow the public to register, why couldn't trolls register? Why couldn't spammers and hackers register? It doesn't meeting if you go, it doesn't matter if you go to WebEx or uh, Google Meet or you know, um, other tools that come out that are supposedly more secure. If anyone can register for your meeting, anyone can bomb your meeting. So I thought a lot about this and really the most secure and practical solution is to have a strategy for preventing, for vetting the people who sign up. And if you vet the people who sign up for your meetings, it doesn't matter if you use Zoom or something else. You're vetting the people who have the link, who have the access information to your, to your meeting. That's what you need to do. So there are basically two options for creating a public large meeting where you vet the participants. Two options I'm going to share with you. One option is this. You selectively invite, but then you stream publicly. Let me explain what I mean. First, you, you, what, you, what I know you want to do is you, the reason why you're having a large, what, you, what you're trying to have is a large public meeting, right? What you're really trying to do is to get that content of that meeting out to many people. So first of all, let's, let's get clear on something here. If you just want to get your content out to many people, you can simply do a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live video, you know, and, and have people chat and you can look at the, 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 the chat along the way like I do with my videos and people can, you know, people can give you questions through the chat through Facebook or YouTube while on Zoom, you're by yourself. 
that's the most secure and, and still very public way of getting your content out there. However, what if you want to interact with some people right in the Zoom meeting and still have the public be able to see it? Then you selectively invite some people that you already know personally that you think would be good attendees that you would like to interact with. So let's say five or 10 of your clients or colleagues or fans or friends, five, 10, 15, 20, however many you want to do this for, you, you invite those people only, you send them the Zoom link and simply tell them, listen, please keep the Zoom link, Zoom link private. It should never be shared anywhere. And I've been doing this. I, I've been, first of all, I, I should have said this earlier. I'm not going to change anything for my private meetings and for my paid Zoom meetings. That's very important to say. I've, like I said, I've, I've done over a thousand Zoom meetings, most of them group meetings uh, in my client group and in my paid courses. Never has there been random people who joined, let alone trolls and Zoom bombers. Because why? The Zoom bombers aren't going to pay money to join a meeting to bomb it. They're, it's ridiculous. You can easily find lots of free ones. Why would they pay for a course to go there? No, they're not going to do that. They're also not going to join private meetings if you only sent the meeting ID out to your clients or to your a, a set number of colleagues. And every time I do that, I always tell, I put the Zoom meeting link and underneath that, I put in parentheses, please keep the Zoom link private. Going forward, I'm going to add another line. Do not share it anywhere to respect the privacy of the attendees and the, and the security of the meeting, whatever you want to say. But that's all you have to do. So private meetings, paid meetings, no problem. All I'm talking about is public, free Zoom meetings. So like I said, the first method, selectively invite three, five, 10, 20 people that you want to interact with. Okay. Give them a Zoom meeting ID. Tell them not to share it. Okay. And then once you're on the Zoom meeting, you can then stream that meeting through Facebook Live or YouTube Live and have the entire public be able to watch and chat in Facebook or YouTube. And yes, you might say, well, can't they do racist or bad, you know, spam type of chats in Facebook or YouTube? They could, but we're all more used to seeing, okay, if there's spam, we kind of ignore it. Just It's just a chat. It's not, it's not a video that's playing right on your meeting or anything. It's just a chat. And also, you're, you're allowing Facebook and YouTube to do the to do a bit of vetting for you because YouTube and Facebook quickly shut out spammers and, and, and people like that. So um, anyway, so selectively invite people, tell them it's private link and stream publicly if you want that content out public. Or if you don't want to stream public and have to deal with the comments that are coming through, then just record your Zoom meeting and then share it as a video later. Then you're not streaming and you don't have to worry about the chat thread in real time on Facebook or YouTube. Got it? Selectively invite, record it. Optionally, you can stream that publicly. Otherwise, just upload the recording later. Okay, so that's option number one. Selectively invite, maybe stream publicly or just share the video later. The second option is if you really want a large number of people interacting with each other. So you, it's, again, it's a free public Zoom meeting where you want dozens or even hundreds of people interacting with each other. Here's what you need to do. You need to have people register, okay? And my suggestion is to use MailChimp or whatever email newsletter software you use, Aweber, Constant Contact, whatever. But use an email newsletter software to take registration. So people are essentially signing up, signing up for a mailing list for that event, about that event, okay? So, so create a mailing list just for that event, have people sign up and in the signup process, ask them at least one open-ended question to vet their interest in the event. So you might want to ask, um, please describe with at least um, 15 to 20 words your interest in this topic. Okay? Something like that. Then those, you know, for example, if I'm asking people to sign up to talk about authentic marketing, then they're going to say, well, I'm interested in authentic marketing because I've, I've, been, I've, I've seen the mainstream ways of marketing. I don't like the pop-ups. I don't like this, the false scarcity and things like that. That's why I want to talk with you. Oh, okay, so this person clearly has a passion, has an interest in this topic. So I know that that person is legit. So in other words, you ask 
an open-ended question um, in your registration besides their email address and their name, uh, that open-ended question. So that's the first thing you do is to have an open-ended question in, in your registration. Trolls and Zoom bombers aren't gonna go through the trouble of thoughtfully answering an open-ended question because again, they're looking for easy targets. They're looking for just Zoom links that are freely available on the internet. They can bomb. I mean, there are so many of them out there at any time of the day that Zoom bombers can just go there. They're not gonna worry about a registration form and answering it correctly. Got it? Okay, so registration form, open-ended question, thoughtful question. And then also very importantly, you need to uh, be clear in your registration marketing of the event that the event registration ends four hours before the event starts. You need to make that clear in the marketing of the event. Event the registration ends four hours before it starts, which means that you need to schedule for yourself three hours before the event starts. You need to just have cleared your calendar so that three hours before the event starts. Oh, sorry, you, four, four hours, right? But in, in the registration confirmation page, so once they register, they, they finish registering, the confirmation page and email should not have the Zoom link. Let me repeat that. The confirmation page and email should not have the Zoom link, but it should explain, thank you for registering. To maintain the privacy, we are vetting each attendee. And if you are accepted into the event, we will email you the Zoom link two hours before the event. Got it? Tell them you'll email them the Zoom link two hours before. Okay, so three hours before the event, you sit down at the computer and you look at all the event registrations and the, the answers, okay? And if there's any answers that are super short or questionable, you then email that person to say, if you're, if you're able to respond before the event, we can still let you in, but please let us know your interest because we need a longer response than this. That's it. And then if they happen to email you with enough time for you to send it to them, great. If not, just let them, if we don't get your response in time, we will send you the recording afterwards. Thank you for your interest. So, so that's it. So then you, 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 you delete or respond to people who seem suspicious and the remaining people you send them through the mailing list software like MailChimp or Const, cause they already, they already signed up. So you delete the ones who are suspicious maybe, and you, send the Zoom link two hours before the event to the people who are legit. That's it, that's simple. Remember to telling them to keep the Zoom link private. And I can almost guarantee you by doing that, you will never have to experience the Zoom bombing experience, which is like I said, terrible. It, it, it's a humiliating, it's shocking, it's traumatic. It made me not wanna do Zoom meetings for a while, but I, I kept going and it's really not, not a problem unless you post it publicly. Remember, how did they find my Zoom meeting? Because it was a public Facebook event page with a Zoom meeting ID. And, and also, I streamed my, my meeting publicly on Facebook Live with the Zoom meeting ID in the Facebook event, uh, sorry, in the Facebook video uh, description area too. So just don't put your Zoom meeting ID, Zoom meeting links anywhere publicly, and you should be fine. That's really the main message. So I hope this is helpful. And I look forward to seeing if you have any questions or any comments. And in fact, I am streaming this on Facebook Live right now. So I'm going to give you a moment to add a comment below while I look at the comments and, and see if there are any questions that I should answer right now. So go ahead and comment below while I look for the comments that are live here. Yes, okay, and thank you for those of you who are joining me live, Liz. Peter, Prem, Tina, Susan, Captain. So that's it. I, I'm trying to balance between security and privacy on the one hand and practicality and freedom on the other hand. That's the balance because most people who do security take it way too far. And it's like every, everyone must be perfectly safe and there'll never be any danger, which also means we cannot interact with each other. I mean, if I could talk about the coronavirus, I mean, that's, that's kind of like what we're doing here societally too. It's like so much lockdown so that, that the economy is, is just terrible for everybody because we can't interact with each other. Anyway, so it's this balance between security, privacy, and, and freedom and, and uh, community on the other side 
that's the balance here. And that's what I, that's the, the methods that I'm showing you that will achieve those aims for Zoom public free meetings. So, all right. I'm George Cow, authentic business coach. Um, I usually talk about building a business authentically. So only subscribe to this channel if you actually want to learn about building a solopreneur business in an authentic, honest way, doing marketing honestly and with love. Otherwise, if you're just here for Zoom advice, don't subscribe to my channel. Um, I don't usually talk about Zoom stuff. So, all right. Okay, I'll see you in the next video about authentic business or authentic marketing. See you soon. Bye-bye.